Okay, so we're back at our whiteboard. Uh, we have the conceptual model we came up with. I just made some room, room for myself to put the attributes in, and we're gonna go through the logical modeling step, right? Um, remember here, uh, for logical modeling, you would basically put in the attributes that are needed um, that you wanna keep track of for each entity. Um, what I'm going to do is also add in uh, the foreign keys uh, just because when we go to the physical modeling step, since this is a bigger ERD, instead of spending time writing out every one of the data types, uh, we're going to do a couple, but leave. Um, the, we'll give you the uh, full schema at the end, but instead of going through and writing each individual data type through whiteboarding, we're going to save some time um, and just uh, show you the end results. Um, so that's why here I'm going to be adding in the uh, foreign keys as well, but typically you would likely do that during the physical modeling step um, Okay, but I'm basically going to start from the top uh, add in the attributes that we're going to be needing So we'll start with the uh, membership type entity, right? So again for membership types probably going to need an ID membership type ID uh, that probably has a title um, Then remember for membership types we talked about how it's going to be keeping track of different rules for the membership so things like late days allocated, um, maybe late fees. Uh, so different, different rules that's gonna apply to the membership type. So late days allocated might be the number of days uh, that's allowed to have a book be late before late fees start occurring. Um, again, these are just different requirements that might be needed in the system. We're just kinda thinking of different ones. So we're not gonna worry too much about it. But in our case, couple attributes um, and the keys are basically all we're focused on for now, right? Um, okay, and then looking at this, we're pretty much good with membership types. So moving on, members. Uh, again, I'm gonna need a member ID as our primary key. I'm also likely going to need, so we see it joins to membership types, so uh, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my foreign key um, there. Then what other attributes is a member gonna have? So things like first name, last name, uh, email, and so on. Um, and probably other attributes as well, So, but we're not gonna focus too much on them. Um, besides that, uh, member looks good. Uh, why don't we go to employee from here since that also relates to it. Um, so let's say if we're employee, we're gonna need a primary key again. Let's say employee ID. Uh, maybe there's a job title associated with the employee. Um, maybe there's a hire date. Again, these are just additional attributes I'm thinking of that you might need. Um, and in the interview, you might want to talk through a couple important ones, but I wouldn't spend too much time on getting every single attribute uh, that you would need for it to function. The only thing I would say you definitely want to add in is things that were mentioned in the that we decided were requirements. Um, Okay, and the other requirement here we had was remember it joins to member ID, uh, to member, so we're gonna have member ID be our foreign key to the member uh, table eventually. Um, besides that, mm, looks like we're good here. So, and now why don't we actually go to do that product granularity? Um, so, remember the very top level um, is going to be, uh, so it might be the magazine name or like a book series name like Harry Potter and so on. So you're gonna have, uh, let's call it a product product line ID and a name and you're likely gonna have other stuff. We won't worry about it too much, but in our case, let's, let's keep using Harry Potter as an example and so that's gonna be our product line. Product is going to be the individual parts, so part one to part seven. Um, so you're gonna have a product ID uh, a name, uh, sorry, you're gonna have a product ID, name might be other attribute, but like before that, let's do, you're gonna, you're gonna have to join that to product line, right? So you're gonna have product line ID as a foreign key to product line. Uh, you're gonna have your name, then you see this also joins to publisher and author. So you're gonna have those IDs as well, right? So you'll have a, author ID and a publisher ID. Um, okay, uh, so again, we're thinking about uh, the joins when we're turning into foreign keys. And this pretty much joins to everything. Uh, product item, we see there's that other relationship, but product item is gonna have the foreign key there. So 
for product, it pretty much looks like we're good. Um, yeah, and then actually since we did that, we'll actually do publisher and author really quickly because these are pretty quick. So I'm gonna do, if this is publisher ID, it'll probably have a name and other attributes for author, same concept where you're gonna have an author ID and name, uh, probably some other attributes. Um, okay, so we're pretty much done with that side and we have, we have our two left. So product item, again, that's the third most granularity. So the different copies of each Harry Potter um, each Harry Potter version, uh, each sorry, uh, different copies of each Harry Potter part that you have. So you're gonna have an ID for each each copy, right? So you'll have a product item copy. Sorry, product item ID. Um, maybe you'll have something like a version number. So let's say there's ten copies. You might have version one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, one to ten. Um, Again, not really important, but you might be something that the library uses. Um, product ID, that's again, that's gonna be our foreign key to the product. That second granularity table on the right side, product ID. And maybe you have something like date added where um, if the library keeps getting multiple copies, maybe they keep track of uh, that version number and uh, different dates when it's added, just to keep track of how old a particular copy is. Um, okay, um, besides that, we're pretty much good with product item. And last one is item checkouts, really, right? And this is the one that keeps track of the individual transactions, right? Um, of people checking out books. You're going to have product item ID because a copy is what's actually going to be checked out. Member ID is the person who's going to check it out. Uh, we'll probably have a checkout date, um, a scheduled. Let's, yeah, and so since we're keeping track of late fees with this, um, so one thing you might want to do is have a scheduled return date and then an actual return date. This way, um, what you'd be able to do is, if you're in the library, you'd be able to take the difference of them. So if it was return two days late or something, um, I'd be able to take the difference. So return date minus scheduled return date um, and then I can use that to track the uh, late fees if there are any. So a uh, use case I might think of is so you see in membership types here. Um, actually, let's do this. Yeah. So you see here in membership types, there's the late days allocated and the late fees. So something I might do is I might do some calculations here um, to see what the difference is between the return date and schedule date and see if it's greater than the late days allocated. Um, and if it is, I might decide to, I might use the late fees to calculate how much they owe, you know, so. Um, again, that's just uh, one of the use cases you might, uh, you might want to talk through. Uh, as you're kind of doing a decision to your interviewer, you might want to talk through different use cases to kind of show why you're making these decisions and putting these attributes in, besides what's in the requirements. Um, okay, then sort of looking at this, we're pretty much good, where this is pretty much our complete uh, ERD. We have our attributes, we have our relationships, and we're basically ready to move on to the next step now. So if I really quickly, I'm going to go back to the slides. Um, where was I? Yeah, I was with logical modeling, right? Here, we're keeping track of the attributes. These were the different requirements that we had. And then if we kept going with it, uh, this is what we just put together, right? Uh, we have our different entities and the attributes that are associated with each and the relationships. And at this point, our ERD is complete. And from here, we're ready to move on to physical modeling, right? Um, and then from here, we just ask ourselves, we have our logical model. How are we gonna implement this to, act to actually implement this, to implement the ERD in a database? So how do we create our schema? And we basically ask ourselves, what are the data types, the primary and foreign key relationships, constraints needed, and so on. Um, again, I mentioned uh, we're not going to do the whole whiteboarding exercise for this because it would basically be me again going through and just writing down data types. Um, so just to save some time, this is what yeah, you would end up with, where this is basically the complete uh, physical model schema you have. And it's basically kind of what we did there where the attributes, all of them are basically what we just went through and put in in our um, 
logical and conceptual modeling step uh, in our complete ERD. And the only thing differences here are adding in uh, what's the what's the primary key, what's the foreign key, and the data types, right? And most and then as you're doing this, most of the data types are pretty self-explanatory. So things that say date is going to be a date time. Uh, most other things you can just leave it as a var car. Uh, things that are numbers you can likely leave it as integers. Uh, here I had the late fee per day. I put that as a float in case there's going to be multiple. Uh, it might be a, a decimal number, um, and so on. So I wouldn't worry. So in an actual interview, you likely aren't going to be worried too much about getting the exact details of specific data types. It's more the modeling and seeing how they relate to each other. Um, and the only other difference between this, again, is instead of having the one-to-many relationships now, now we have the arrows pointing from the foreign key to the primary key that they're going to be uh, joining to. Because again, this is what's going to tell the data, data engineers who are implementing the database how they're going to construct the DDL statements. Um, Okay, so I would uh, kind of uh, pause the video here, kind of take take a look through uh, through this, make sure you understand it. But again, it's not too different from the exercise we just went through in logical in logical modeling, right? Uh, just added in the data types to get our complete schema, which we have complete here. Okay, and again, so if you think back, to, remember back to the question. Uh, it said one of the requirements for this was to create the DDL statements, right? So before we do that, we're actually going to do just a quick recap on, in general, what DDL statements, constraints, and table design uh, entails. Want to become a software engineer at Google? You can, like thousands of our students. You just need to learn from those who've already cleared FANG interviews. At Interview Kickstart, our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like Google and Facebook. Our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including backend, full stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today 